hello. Today we are again uh, here to talk about movies, me and Josh. But also <laughs> today we have a very, very special guest uh, who Joshua, uh, Josh will introduce right now. <laughs> uh, her, her name is Kiwi. Hello, I'm and Kiwi. She's going to be <laughs> and she's going to be here to talk about how it's moving castle with us. A film we all three have seen. Yes. And but then I don't I'm know leaving. What our yeah. takes are. <laughs> uh, I, at least I mean I watched the movie with TV together, so I think we are very similar in our views. But yes, kind of. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe to start we could just briefly say briefly say what this movie is, and for those who don't know. Uh, I mean, it's a Miyazaki film, so, you know, it's an anime a film, and um, it's made by Ghibli, so, and it's, it's known to be, it's very infamous for actually being great. Yes, yeah, so that, <laughs> but I think that, a lot of people... Technically, <laughs> I, yeah, well, I don't know if I would call it ironic. The thing is, we actually like all Ghibli films. Uh, there's no Ghibli film that we really despise, I would say. Yeah. But Even I though know, I haven't yeah. seen every one. Uh, I, yeah, didn't, yeah. I didn't watch the Tales of Earthsea. I think that one's supposed to be kind of not so great. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard the, thing, uh, the, the same thing about um, The Wind Rises. Uh, people have mixed opinions about The Wind Rises, and yeah. but they seem to really love Howl's Moving Castle. But I would say yeah. we all three have great taste, but <laughs> Howl's Moving Castle <laughs> didn't really uh, appeal to us. I don't know why, and I have much to rant about, so yeah. um, who's going to start first? I, I Maybe think... Maybe we should... Oh, well, uh, Michael we just... Each give <laughs> should we first give each? <laughs> so should we first uh, give our t takes in like one sentence what each of us think to make to okay. maybe be yeah, on the same? Sure. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. that's yeah. a good okay, idea. Let, yeah. So let's start, Josh. Okay, um, one sentence, right? Mm, I just <laughs> didn't buy the film. Really, I, I didn't buy it. Like literally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like literally <laughs> so okay Miyazaki um, <laughs> Miyazaki um, always creates those fantastical worlds right but um, no matter how whimsical they seem the characters seem always so grounded but mm -hmm. in House Moving Castle I didn't buy the characters really and um, the characters are like I would call the anchors in Miyazaki films but to be honest, no. Um, I just, I just didn't get them. I just didn't get their motivation, and um, they seem so shallow to me somehow. I don't know. Okay. That's a very well. long sentence. <laughs> the trouble with three people on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that can't see each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So. Then continue, you, Michael. What you gonna? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, this is actually my second viewing of that movie, and I have to say, at this, I think the first time I saw it, I was uh, also thinking, "What the heck was that?" Uh, it was beautiful, <laughs> but I have no idea what happened, and I'm kind of mixed. <laughs> but the second time I watched it, I think it got a bit clearer to me what the movie is about, and the story those some aspects are still confusing which i talked about with a uh, tv and yeah i i think it's it's one of these movies where i'm like oh i would love to just like really really praise this film but i can't yeah yeah so you didn't buy it either okay yeah <laughs> not completely, not completely, but I think I'm a bit more positive than uh, Josh. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, I have kind of the same opinions like Michael because I, it, it was my second watching as well. And, um, well, the first time I didn't get it 
at all. Also because I fell asleep, <laughs> like near <laughs> the end. Yeah, and I really wanted to enjoy it because it's like such a beautiful world and um, just like the concept, a uh, concept I really like. But um, it was really confusing to me as well. And um, also, mm. yeah. But I think um, for a normal movie, I'd say I really like it. But for a Miyazaki one, where I have like higher expectations, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. not my favorite Miyazaki movie. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it, it, it's probably none of our favorites. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Well, okay, with this other... Oh, maybe to preface, um, has any one of us read the novel? Uh, I mean, the film is ba technically based on, like, this novel by this author, uh, I think, from America. But I haven't read that book, so... Kiwi has the book. <laughs> yeah, I have the book. I, oh, um, right, right. But I didn't finish it. I just started reading it again, but I'm, like, on page 30, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Can't say a lot about the book. Okay, so. Uh, but it's quite an old a... book, yeah. Mm. And I um I read that it's quite different from the movie. Um, mm. like, but I'm not sure on, like, where it's different. Yeah, I also heard some differences, but not many. But I I mean. There were some that I heard of. Yeah, I think it's much more detailed, um, mm. and a lot. Of, books are. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's right. Um, and I think a lot more is explained in the book. Okay. Uh, yeah, which maybe... which was kind of uh, the problem that we saw, like Michael and I saw, because we we were uh, like oh, we didn't get that, and we had to like skip back and watch it again because we didn't get anything <laughs> near the end mm. yeah well it was partially all, also our fault because we would make some jokes or remarks yeah that's true film, yeah um, okay okay so let me quickly um kind of iterate through my list of complaints um, yeah i thought it was yeah you seem like the most the one with the mo strongest opinion, so it's yeah. the, probably the most interesting if like uh, so, me and so, Kiwi play yeah. Devil's Accurate Cat and you just ran through it. <laughs> so the thing is, we all um, agree that we didn't get the film the first time. Um, yeah. The problem is, I watched it only once. Oh, I see. And mm -hmm. yeah, perhaps yeah, yeah. I need to watch it again. But um, just the plot, man, <laughs> it's, it's way too convoluted. <laughs> like, it's so stuffed. I just didn't get it. And um, so there's this war, right, between different nations. Right. And yeah. I didn't quite get the point of it. Like, how is it um, related to, to our main character? Yeah, the first like, time well, I, I didn't get it either. But I, th like, I think now I understand a bit more. Sorry for I mean, interrupting. <laughs> do you mean like the motivation behind the war or uh, what, what exactly is your... I, I don't completely get your question i mean the uh so, why yeah, the war starts is, is pretty clear uh pardon what the, uh, sorry I why didn't the war you correctly. <laughs> yeah it's okay um why it happened why yeah it was war... clear yeah that that was clear i it mean clear. yeah but um yeah just thought that these two things were just completely independent from each other like they had uh, no reason yeah, to I... coexist you know uh, I don't, I mean, like, don't if really we, like, get if it. If we like completely remove the war part, it would be the same movie, basically. Yeah, right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I can. Uh, that, that, I ties, that come on, that ties <laughs> into Sophie's character as well, because come on, okay, Sophie is like okay, uh, I'm this ugly girl in her opinion, but she's <laughs> actually quite beautiful as all Ghibli characters are. <laughs> But um, so mm -hmm. there, there comes this. Josh is He's very self-conscious. This. What? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, okay. I just uh, said that you, you, you were simping. Continue. Yeah, let's just continue. <laughs> just continue, Josh. Okay, and that. Okay, there comes this witch that turns Sophie into an old woman. Okay. Yeah. And she completely accepts it, like, 
like it was nothing like okay now I'm, <laughs> now I'm an old woman I don't have to have to worry about anything and I could <laughs> enjoy this like how man um how I mean, can you so nonchalantly <laughs> accept this <laughs> you said so many points I well I like, mean she forgot the first one almost uh pardon uh yeah Kiwi, your audio it? is like uh, sometimes really suppressed and what subdued. do you mean Black woman, I sh no, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we have Sorry. to cut this out? <laughs> no, it's okay. okay, okay. <laughs> this is a spoiler okay, podcast, also know. for outdoor jokes. Uh, yeah. Um, can you hear me, or <laughs> is it? Yeah, uh, I can hear you perfect. now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, um, I didn't say a lot. So, yeah. But what did you say? <laughs> yeah. I mean. Oh um. Well, maybe. Yeah, you... I said that Josh said a lot of points, and um, I almost forgot the first one, but now I remember. Mm. <laughs> uh, about. Do you guys have? Yeah, yeah. So so you said um, said that Sophie just accepted that she uh, she's like a ni ninety year old. <laughs> granny now and yeah, <laughs> yeah um, at first i thought it was kind of weird as well because she 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 wasn't hysterical or anything she just like looked in the mirror like oh i'm wrinkly and yeah, like but well, like after thinking about it i feel like um because i was thinking why uh, why did the like granny turn her and um, not the granny the witch turn her into <laughs> Turn her into the witch of the like, waste. Yeah, old woman. Because um, she could have just turned her ugly, right? Because she was like, even though she thought she was ugly, she wasn't really ugly uh, at mm -hmm. the beginning. And I thought maybe mm -hmm. it's because Sophie acts like an old lady already. Because like, um, in contrast to her sister, because her sister is like really. Uh, I'd say like youthful because she's very like happy and loud and stuff and also doing yeah, something that she yeah. likes because Sophie seems like mm -hmm. she's pretty bored of her life so maybe the witch just turned her into like her true self like it just showed mm -hmm. that she she acts like an old lady and that's mm. why she now looks like one too. Okay, that's yeah. an interesting point, but I wouldn't necessarily call um, Sophie um, Sophie's attitude uh, an old lady's attitude. She's like more timid and uh, yeah, shy. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and self-conscious. Like, yeah, self yeah self-conscious, especially that. But like, yeah. okay, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe um, when Sophie gets turned into an old lady, she gets uh, she gets a new perspective onto life. And she sees a life through a new lens or something. I mean, yeah, I'm sure, but I I would have like a more pragmatical thing as well. I mean, in the movie we see her like looking in the mirror, and it seems like oh she she's shocked, but not like hysterical. But then we cut mm -hmm. like to the next morning, so she had like, and it seems like she didn't had much sleep. So to me, it seemed like. She basically looked in the mirror for like four hours or something. So I don't know. For me, that's like, it's just something they didn't necessarily show. Oh, just like cut out. You no. Know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And um, I mean, to add to that. Yeah. Yeah. Continue, Michael. Continue, Michael. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, what I also wanted to say is just in general, the movie is not. Um, does require the audience to like think what the characters want a lot of the time because they don't spell it out. For example, at the, f I think the first time I watched the movie, I didn't get why um, Sophie would want to go to the wastelands, but until later that mm -hmm. I remembered, oh right, she she had this curse on her, so it makes sense for her to like search for some magician or witch to like uh, basically break her curse. 
And I think this is just like the general pattern with this movie and why so many people find it so inaccessible the first time around because so many things that the characters do seem unmotivated at first but actually make sense if you think about it. Yeah, I see that too. Spelled out. A lot of mm. is not explained. It's just it just happens. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can <laughs> see where you come yeah, uh, where you're coming from. But yeah, still I... like okay, Sophie seeks seeks a cure, right? And mm -hmm. at the end of her journey, um she does change indeed, like she obviously um gets less self conscious, is more confident I'd say. But like her journey and how she falls in love with Howl is like come on man. <laughs> that I didn't buy either. Like why didn't you buy? I have to say I didn't it? buy the love thing either. Yeah. Like and it's so you know it's so sporadic because throughout the movie when she's an old lady, she sometimes yeah. changes her appearance. Right, whenever yeah, like she she admits her love to Howl, but like mm -hmm. that relationship is like utterly not established. It's like it's. It appears out of the blue. Like she goes into that castle, meets Hal, and she falls immediately in love with him. Well, I mean, they okay, met man. before. They it's met like before. not immediately, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, first she had an encounter with him also as like these creepy soldier people were, you know, hitting mm -hmm. on her. Oh, yeah, they had rapey voices. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, I mean, there was a first encounter, and I would yeah, say... But that you know that foundation is not solid enough, I think. But it's just, oh, um, how it happens to be r right there where she is, okay. I yeah, mean, but that's, I, oh, that's sorry. possible, right? Mm. It's okay if you, if you insert like this coincidence in the beginning of the film, but... It was really romantic, I think, like when they were like walking through the sky with the beautiful score and stuff. I mean... Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. And also, he's good looking, like, and she's. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> can I can I add something to that? Because I think Howl's appearance is like, um, way too like anime esque. <laughs> Like, well, it's an anime, like, she, I guess. He looks way yeah, too it's an anime, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, but he, it, it's way too anime. Like, you know, it's like. You're talking about what? how what? I don't get you. What? He isn't. What? what? No. Wait, no. He's, he's like uh, he what? He's like female, what TikTok man. boys want to look like. <laughs> you you mean those um. Like TikTok e boys. How do you call these guys? Yeah, e boys, right? Yeah. E -boys. <laughs> Especially with the black hair. Yeah. And the earrings <laughs> uh, and... Uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah. He's quite well, edgy. I, um, <laughs> well, that with the black hair was like... She didn't like it at first, but like... As didn't soon he have as orange said, hair? It okay on him. Uh, he also kind of accepted that, you know? And I, that, that was the moment where I was like, okay, they're getting along, getting closer, maybe a bit. Uh, oh, the hair okay. incident or what? Like, the whole thing. Like, him just... I mean, he didn't enjoy having, like, hair at first, right? Didn't he have like, orange hair at first? Oh, right. And then it, it kind of turned... Orange or yellow? Uh, I mean... But it then turned black. A, a yellow, later. like, blonde. Well, what the hell? Yellow. Oh, orange or yellow? Like, uh, <laughs> blonde at first. And then... Um, Sophie yeah, cleaned the bathroom and he accidentally um, like colored his hair orange, I think. Yeah, and when he had like his temper tantrum and like and turned into slime, <laughs> that was his... cool. What? He turned into slime, right? That was cool. Yeah, <laughs> and his hair turned uh, black. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, where were we coming from? Oh, the the first encounter thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. How, did... how do you guys, like, what's your opinion of how? Um, how, like the person? Yeah, yeah um, like the character. 
I'm very mixed about his character, to be honest. I actually kind of. I'm like fine him. with this experience. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Why are you laughing? As you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. It's, I. Yeah. So you guys like him? I, I don't know, man. I just. He's. A, it, it seems very unmotivated. Some of the things he does, but. At, yeah. at first, I don't know. In, like he goes whole, out, I... he goes out to stop the war or what? He's just. <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, what one thing that I that bothered me when I watched the movie the first time around was um, that I find how very childish, like because the um, he's angry yeah, about he's his hair and, and he doesn't yeah. want to fight in the war. He's like kind of. Um, doesn't want to do anything and what i noticed this time was that when he was uh, when he was a kid um he like the whole curse thing started mm -hmm. right with calcifer, you mean with and, calcifer? Stuff. Yeah. and he um removed his heart or something like that i don't really get yeah, that he, part and, ge and well he let um he let calcifer eat his heart so that oh, calcifer yeah. could uh, live true yeah and because I, Calcifer was one of these like asteroid things falling from the sky. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and and then I thought maybe when from that moment on he, he didn't um, mature, ma mature, oh, mature anymore, because um, when you see his castle, it's like it's like really dirty, and he has. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuffed animals and like random childish stuff. Yeah, do you remember yeah. his bedroom and the uh, weird tunnel thing where yeah. Sophie had to yeah. go mm. through? It was like stuffed with. You mean in the dream? Yeah, yeah, it was stuffed with yeah. all this like kids stuff. And then I thought maybe he he Wait. was just um he like stopped to stopped growing after thing so that's why he's kind of childish and doesn't want to fight in the war and stuff like that he probably also has like a lot of potions just to keep him young himself. yeah and, oh yeah and, true. Uh, that's that's actually an interesting point because um i think um the queen i i forgot her name sullivan like, uh, uh, sullivan and she's not a queen she's just like the main magician for the, the main magician right yeah um yeah, for, she like, says that government. um she says that how is abusing his powers and that is kind of another indicator for i guess his childishness um, i mean he's using it for selfish reasons he he wants yeah, to live he's by himself he's yeah. he wants to be free and what solomon is trying to do is like basically enslave all like the magicians with the war <laughs> as like a backdrop right so, like all the magicians had to fight in war and they become yeah. these creatures and yeah yeah true no, i didn't no like that her I think about it yeah yeah it, I mean, she, she was also villain, creepy so. michael and i said she was like a creepy old woman because all her little um yeah. like <laughs> right. um butlers all, her all servants, look like how they all look like how it's like she's obsessed with them it's yeah, really, really creepy I, I didn't i didn't notice it they looked but, like when he was younger with the right, weird uh, haircut like, remember uh, the scene in which it was playing, it was like, okay, one of the pseudonyms under which Hal goes by, that magician, had to go, was invited mm -hmm. into, like, the Majesty's castle and to meet Sullivan, Sullivan, I don't know. And uh, then um, he's, he would send Sophie as, like, his mother and uh, yeah. then Hal would disguise himself right yeah. to like follow with follow her to keep her safe um but and we actually okay at first you have to you were meant to believe that it is like the dog of like the um oh yeah majesty or something like that little exactly. dog. Yeah. yeah and then and then me and uh kiwi thought it was actually one of the servants as which uh, Howell disguised himself yeah. oh, because yeah. they look so similar. We were like, oh, wait. And then, like, the king turns into Howell, and we were like, oh. Oh, what? And then, like, <laughs> a, a bunch of other servants showed up. They all looked the same. It's so weird. 
it's really, yeah. But but the butler had a mustache, and Howl doesn't have a mustache. No, it was a kid, oh, dude. It was a kid. Wait, what? The servants Wait, what? for Sullivan were like little Howl children. I think you. Wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me. I think the king had a mustache. It. Mustache? Did you say mustache? Yeah, the king had a mustache. Um, the yeah. servant. Okay, okay. Wait. Oh man, the king kind of look, okay, looks looks like a, the Pringles man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that detail though. Yeah, it's just no. a small detail, but it's really small. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just ran uh -huh. out of character designs. They were like, let's make a bunch of <laughs> <Whoa>. little holes. <laughs> <laughs> that would, yeah. Hopefully not. That would be very disappointing and cynical. Uh, okay, guys, I have another point I want to touch okay, on. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe before that. Um, we didn't finish talking about, about Howl, right? And also, I want to like say something about the love thing <laughs> between um, uh, Howl and Sophie. I mean, yes, I do feel it's rushed, and I didn't quite buy it. But on the other hand, it's like this kind of fairy tale thing, so where, you know. Love is yeah. never fully developed, so yeah, maybe they just goes with yeah. the, fall in love. Uh, it goes with the genre, you know. Yeah, I still think um one thing that I noticed was um when Hall um do you say Hall? Uh, how? How? Sorry, Hall. <laughs> how? <laughs> how? <laughs> how? Um, how first time um the first time he meets Sophie he he goes something like um oh um I've been looking for you everywhere or something like that mm -hmm. and at first you may believe it's because he's trying to get her out of the weird situation with the soldier right. soldier yeah. guys but then um at the end um you can see Sophie like traveling back in time right to see um, how how and Calcifer made that um, when they made like this yeah, bond, that bond the, the bond yeah, yeah. and she says like find me in the future so so maybe how um, was saying that because he finally found her in the future right that like he's been looking for her everywhere yeah. yeah that sentence is very ambiguous I mean it has like these two min meanings yeah and I thought that was cool. really cool I do like that as well yeah because uh, you 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 think that how how is like a player because he's um like looking or eating all these beautiful uh, girls hearts and stuff but maybe <laughs> he isn't a player maybe he's just looking for sophie right so that's kind of sweet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's, yeah. it's make me like him more as michael said and vague and Nothing is really explained in this movie anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so, like, uh, passive-aggressive about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. I don't know. No. So yeah, go to the next point. To touch on. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what's your take on the score? Like, I really like the main score, like this... What's it called? Merry-go-round, I think? Yeah, yeah. merry-go-round yeah, of beautiful. life. It's cool, but yeah, the walls. But other than that, other than that, I find the score quite weak. Like, oh nothing, really? Uh, quite vivid, except for like the main theme. If you compare that to Miyazaki's other films, the entire soundtrack list is like quite memorable. But I think the movie relied way too much on that uh, main theme. And it's played okay. way too often, I think. <laughs> uh, I mean, have you seen Nasca of the Valley of, uh, of the no. Wind? Unfortunately, well, that no. theme, dude, that gets repeated throughout. So <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I, I'm fine with it. But Michael it really likes like, yeah. Nausicaa. Mm. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I, could you repeat what you said, TV? <laughs> oh, um, I said that you really like Nausicaa, um, the score in yeah, the movie. Yeah, I, I just I love the art style of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't seen yeah. it, actually. Uh, but <laughs> going back to House Moving Castle, uh, I just, I, I, I think I get what you mean. Mm -hmm. 
it, does it make sense to say it feels a bit more Western? I'm not entirely, I didn't quite pay too much attention to the score, but I think maybe that could be why, because mm, okay. like obviously like the composers, Japanese, I don't know. Japan, yeah. yeah, I yeah. think it's mm, Western, I, the uh, Europeans. It, it, it probably has that. more of a like, Mm. I actually really I, like the score because yeah, I like the variations too, of the um, main score. Yeah, it's like a light motif. Yeah, I I really like mm -hmm, it yeah, actually. Yeah, okay. And it's very memorable. Sure. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's way too memorable that the entire film basically relies on this uh, single piece. But <laughs> to to it being western um i don't know if you can call a soundtrack like um i mean western, western influence, i don't maybe. know perhaps but <laughs> when i hear the score i always like uh, remind myself of like this um like like a circus like <laughs> that soundtrack could be played oh. like on a circus like something like that yeah, I can see Which that. Which is not to of. say it's bad, but... Yeah. Even though yeah. I've never been to a circus, but, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's kind of festival. Oh, not festival. Like, medieval. and I don't know. Yeah, like... Um, hmm. Now that you say it, it has, like, a like an European flair. I mean, um, mm -hmm. House Moving Castle is set in uh in a in a european setting i guess yeah kind of like so mid yeah mid 1800s something in europe somewhere i have no idea so I josh guess is the history the music... guy <laughs> yeah I, I thought there's one location that um resembled denmark like copenhagen okay. that, that harbor um, um and oh, okay. city at I, the I'm completely lost. Harbor, Don't ask me about geography. Yeah, and the I guess main city or the city where the film starts in uh -huh. had like um Dutch or German labels, you know? Uh, mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, street, <laughs> street signs in Dutch and or in German. Oh, oh my so God. I guess okay. if you go for that star, you had you have to kind of make your music a little bit more western yeah i think like the opposed book... to other films uh, like princess yeah. yeah opposed to princess mononoke yeah, yeah. they obviously Which sound is... very different yeah and i just think it probably feels a bit more generic because it feels more like a generic fairy tale mm -hmm. score maybe to you exactly yeah maybe yeah uh one little small <laughs> fun thing during our viewing uh like the the shop where Sophie works in, it's like mm -hmm. because her name is like Sophie Hatter, right? It's like <laughs> what? The hat no way. Yeah. Something like that. Like the hat. I mean, they produce hats, right? So it also yeah, kind of her, makes sense. But I her think last it's name also is her what? Hatter. So I think that was. Oh. What? Anyway, the thing oh was God, okay. uh, Eileen then said, "Hey, wait, was." Did the shop just say hater? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we I couldn't just okay, stop but laughing. Come on, that last name is. <laughs> yeah. I think. I think it's. I think her that's actually. Last name. Yeah, that it's her last name too. That's yeah. She's named Can Sophie Hatter. Audio is like. Okay. Whose audio? I, sh um, I think she. Your audio is like sometimes a little bit delayed, but that, now it's fine. Oh. Yeah. Oops. Okay, other than that, I mean, okay, Hulk's the movie in general has has like beautiful sceneries, but that's kind yeah. of expected from from a Ghibli film. So, yeah, it kind of goes without saying that the score yeah. is beautiful, if not for you memorable. Of course, no, like Yeah, in general the 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 animation and the all that it's like we take it for granted when we talk about yeah. Ghibli films yeah that's true yeah I, I also like um i watched the movie with like headphones and mm -hmm. also the sound design is was very nice so like okay. for example if like 
uh, someone would walk from left to, from right to left mm -hmm. would also hear like the panning in oh, their headphones. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So like, yeah, not every movie probably does that. Mm -hmm. I'd assume. Yeah, I really like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have anything to add? Because I'm actually through with my list. You had two um, points. Okay, you had I like summed three up points, some right? points. I, I okay. yeah, I summed up some points. Like f for instance, I had a point that read too many whys. <laughs> like <laughs> why? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? It's yes. And that's basically sums up um my opinion about the um I guess I just didn't find it really credulous. I don't know. So I summed up these two points, mm -hmm. and yeah, I can see yeah, that. Yeah, and I wrote um, two loose of rules, like everything mm -hmm. can happen. It's like yeah, true. the power of love, the power of the love, end. and that's true. But I I kind of forgive it for being more fa fairy tale ish. Mm. You know. Yeah, I, for I, me it's probably too much. Like, mm. yeah, I mean, it was for me too the first time I watched it. In general, I think uh, to like uh, respond to your points, uh, I wouldn't say there are too many whys necessarily. It's just very dense, a very dense film. Yeah, with like a lot of things, and you need to keep, you need to pay a lot of attention. You need to like, keep track of yeah. everything and. <laughs> Because it's so dense, the movie can basically explain everything. Yeah, especially not. And I think like it doesn't need to hours, explain so, everything, okay. because if you look at other um, Miyazaki movies like Spirited Away, there's not everything explained, and that's yeah, fine. It, yeah, I sure, think. but you, you. Yeah, I'm not saying that um, mysticism is bad or something, but I felt like, for instance, in Spirited Away, it's like. Uh, subdued like you're prepared kind of for things that can happen in mm. this world but in house moving castle this happens because of like um mm. maybe i just had a bad mood at um <laughs> on that day but no i i, I get I you know. i, I get, get you too i think the Thanks, last, <laughs> the last uh, like half an hour is very rushed uh yeah yeah i want to say that as well the yeah, ending absolutely. does feel yeah very Absolutely. very random or like you know as if to tie up every loose end at the very end very yeah, ni yeah. nicely and uh, it didn't quite have the impact it could have had yes and the whole wa war thing was kind of weird as well yeah like it's brushed aside in the end because that um scarecrow then suddenly turns into a man um because, because of she so kisses him. Yeah. Empower yeah, like, yeah, because, what the fuck? Well I mean Yeah right, if but I if you can if you can end like I I would say a major um it's not a storyline necessarily, but like mm -hmm. I perceive the war as like kind of background noise that it's <laughs> that that is way too prevalent and way too um conspicuous. And it plays um, too much of an important role. But if you can like um, end this, 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 this war just by a kiss, then <laughs> for me it has no real meaning. It doesn't have um, that I mean, significance. It maybe to like I think it's okay for me because I mean okay, I have like now looked into it and i don't know if it was explicitly stated in the movie but like the curse under which the prince was like the scarecrow mm -hmm. um it was that he could only be become like a real man again if he gets like uh if he like a experienced true love or something because he also kind of i guess fell in l love with sophie but she didn't mm. like him back right? understandable yeah she didn't like him back <laughs> my damn. man <laughs> <laughs> damn <laughs> oh damn well, he's going and... to take revenge house movie castle too <laughs> well she 
he did say that he he, he won't uh, let that uh, keep him down or something. Mm -hmm, and it yeah. did have like a darker undertone if you read into it. But I'm just saying uh, it wasn't, I mean... It made sense. I understand why it does feel anticlimactic, though. A little bit. Very yeah. anticlimactic. Yeah. Especially if you consider what, um, what's been happening before. Like, mm. their castle gets slowly um, destroyed, oh, I guess. Yeah. It falls apart. And, like, everything is so hectic. And you ask yourself, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then Sophie goes into that door, experiences mm. some inter interstellar shit that <laughs> no one really gets. And then well, she went into like Carl's, I guess, heart, or n not heart figuratively. Or, no, uh, I mean figuratively, as in like <laughs> she experiences, <laughs> she, you know, relives her his experiences or kind of sees them through that. Yeah, door. he sees, he sees him just bonding with Calcifer, but um, was well, saving Calcifer as well. Sure, but. The movie m made it seem like it was a huge revelation. Like, okay, Sophie has now absolute clear vision of of how he she identifies his problems. Um, they basic they basically um, how do you say it? They 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 comprehend each other very well, and suddenly everything mm. is resolved. But that scene in the end just didn't uh, resemble such a thing for me, at least. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess the th to like add those things together into something coherent is uh, yeah, I think our main issue that all these things just happen. And you would think, what's the point? Maybe a bit. I didn't see a problem with yeah. that actually. I mean, me neither. It was a beautiful sequence, so it kind of didn't bother with. I think what the point was. Yeah, mm. Mm, I I don't see a problem with that, but. But what I didn't like was that the um, Witch of the Waste um, was oh, trying right. to keep the heart of House like for herself, and then she uh, Sophie like hugs her and she's like, "Okay, I'll just give it to you." That was weird. The power of God love, baby. Damn, I hate that witch, man. Same. I was like, <laughs> they should I thought just you would drop say the B word. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! I have another. I have another complaint. Like, how? <laughs> okay. Look, there's this witch that turns you into a fucking old granny and you just basically embrace her like nothing happened. Yeah, I think like, so. Seriously? She, yeah. Is that all? She she lost her powers and basically isn't her mean self. Yeah, but she's she's still mean, I guess. But she's just unnecessary. And she doesn't uh, add anything to the story after that. That as well. Uh, but she, was, she was just kind of this... there, like the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dog is just there for um, pet purposes. You I always, guess. For you the always kids. have to. And I guess it. espionage, I guess, too, yeah. because <laughs> at the end, I don't know. Oh, yeah, true. It was yeah. just, yeah, it didn't need to be there. Mm. Um. So my my really last point, all right? Um, <laughs> it's actually a plus. So oh, I think okay. Hull's Moving Castle had some great imagery. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't really shy away from grossness. For, for instance, that that um, stair climbing scene <laughs> of that old witch. It was like so oh. gross, man. But oh yeah. I enjoyed it so thoroughly. <laughs> yeah, everything is like very yeah. vividly. Yeah. You like to see other people suffering. <laughs> yeah, no, she's so mean. <laughs> it, it it is kind of fun that she gets stripped away of her powers and is kind of powerless because yeah. she has to work for herself. I I agree. I I did find that scene comedic as well. Yeah. Also, like with um basically Grandma Sophie versus uh, which without uh, witchcraft yeah. was kind of funny. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it was very long. The yeah, yeah, way like too the long, to be honest. Way yeah, too long. But yeah, I can agree. Mm. So I want to support... I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to support my um, opinion about their relationship real quick. Um, okay. <laughs> 
But I swear it's it's my last contribution to this discussion. <laughs> okay. Um, a, a big reason why I didn't like buy into their relationship is because Sophie and Howell spent so less so less time together. Like mm. Howell's always away doing his stuff. Um, mm. That seems so unmotivated, and Sophie is mostly just working uh, in the castle, right? Uh, she's like spending way much more time with Mark than with Howell. <laughs> By the way, I really dig Mark. He's really sweet. Mark, Mark and Calcifer are the best boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're cute. For sure, man. Mm. Yeah. I like them, too. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe maybe okay. it was just not shown. Perhaps, they but they could they use, like, a technique for, for instance, like like a time lapse or something. Mm. But that doesn't feel like Ghibli, very yeah, Ghibli. Yeah, that, yeah, it doesn't. It feels feel like something like Shinkai like maybe would do. But I mean, mm-hmm. I really like the scene where how um showed her um the the lake with the fields and yeah, flowers like, and stuff. I, I think yeah, that's where he likes to that's a, like, uh, yeah, nice retreat. Development. Oh yeah, that yeah. scene was strong. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um. When the castle transformed also into Sophie's uh, house, former house, it was also kind of sweet. Of how? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, oh yeah. yeah. I, but I'm not saying they had chemistry. Just, like, I just say nice they were. Taste, right? Well, I mean, he kind of shamed his house after hers, which kind of. Sure, but that's all like really materialistic. You need something more, <laughs> you know, internal. I mean, that sound, that sound, sounded really cheesy, but <laughs> I get you. No yeah, I kind it. of get yeah. you, but also if you compare it to Spirit Away, again, like between Haku and Chihiro, there wasn't like huge development stuff, right? Mm. Or um, mm. Princess Mononoke with Ashitaka and Sun. There wasn't like the huge developments, but you still could like imagine that uh, them being together and stuff, right? I but the thing just... is, um, these relationships were not based on love. Like they were based on mutual respect. For instance, in Princess Mononoke, I, I find I personally find it um, extremely compelling that. In the end, Ashitaka doesn't fall in love with um, a son. Oh, like, how do you know that? Around, like she, she, like mm. they're definitely in love, right? Yeah, I th- mm. thought too. Nah. I mean, <laughs> uh, I didn't get that impression. Okay. And the same for. Okay. I mean, sure, but in spirited way, I, I really. I bought it because Haku is like the only person in this new world that uh, Chihiro can trust. And in the beginning, he he helps her probably because he lived through the same experience as she did. And mm. he is basically mm. the guide for her in this new world. But also she so, has this other friend, this girl who helps her. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. I can see it, yeah. Yeah, Oof, it's been so. It's been a while since I watched a movie. Yeah, Kibi is right. There's also this other girl. The mm. I forgot her name, but the, Lin, right? Lin, I think. Lin, Lin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lin. They're close too, I think. And yeah, I mean, yeah, the romance part is maybe you need to imagine all the. Like sweet stuff, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, another thing is that Chihiro basically depended on the help of um, Haku and others, mm. and her motivations were always clear. Like she always wanted to get back to the normal world with uh, her parents, but Sophie kind of loses her direction um, within within the uh, runtime, kind of. Uh, no, no, and no. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Wait, objection here. Uh, All right. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, she she did. Okay, she gets this curse. She tries to break the curse. She goes mm-hmm. to the wastelands. She meets Howl. 
She tries to tell her, her, him about the curse, but at the dinner table she couldn't. She couldn't, tell. yeah. But she, like, and then she just yeah, kind of. I mean, what what would, do you want to do? Do you want to say, okay, I'm going by. I will go wait, to wait, the I next. Wait, I have a nitpick. I have a nitpick. Oh, okay. Why okay. can't she just write it on a paper or something? I th I don't think she <laughs> it's can. Probably do that. prohib. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. I mean. Like, like express it in some other way yeah perhaps you, it's forbidden as well but for me she kind of lost you mean she gave up yeah she gave up midway through quickly, the movie maybe. and just accepts everything yeah she gave um, up way too quickly i She's don't think she, she gave up right she was still trying to figure uh, i think she was yeah, wait, waiting until how like finds out him like himself to say that like mm -hmm what um because he notices that she's under a curse but he doesn't know what kind of curse right but i i mm. think she just waits until he figures it out or um whatever yeah yeah i think though but so but too. how i think how saw um the the young sophie in like in the first half when she's sleeping yeah, yeah. when sophie wakes up it switches back to her granny uh, status. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the the movie um, kind of hints at how it's, I guess, um, awareness of, of 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 Sophie's transformation. But how doesn't mm -hmm. seem to do anything. I think he like, can't do anything I mean, because. Um, I think because another point is that Sophie asked the um, which of the ways to turn the curse back, and she said she couldn't yeah, do anything couldn't about it. So it. she's also yeah. trying to do something about it. She doesn't just give up. Basically, her um, how is her anchor to like this magical world? So she kind of stays with them, and also she likes also, him. Also, I think sure. yeah, she likes him, and I th I think Cole knows that too. Like, mm -hmm. the first time he sees her, you know, transforming back, uh, I could see that maybe he already knew it at that point. And he was just kind of too coward to admit, admit it mm -hmm. itself or, you know, act as, as he does. But is, is Hal really the anchor for Sophie? Because I had the impression that Mark, Mark. <laughs> is more of the anchor, to be honest. <laughs> Like, like, Mark and Sophie I, should. Said, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like as I said before, like um, uh, Hal is like doing his own stuff, <laughs> and he's like that party guy who comes back is completely tired, and um. I so thought he was party fighting. He's kind of, he's kind of trying. I don't know what with the wasn't world, he but fighting he's, I because he was bleeding and yeah. stuff. Yeah, he was like fighting against like the other magicians turned into monster things but for me it's like okay we get montages of him fighting but they seem so meaningless to me like w w for me it's like it's like futile rebellion somehow you know he's doing that because he wants to defy the 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 the, the, the um head magician this solomon or um, Sullivan, mm -hmm. um lady but like he's doing that just because of this sole purpose, like he has no other motivation. Mm. Isn't he so kind of pacifist? It's really weak to me. Yeah, he's he. Yeah, he's a pacifist. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I I have to say I don't quite get what he did in the war either, <laughs> except that he's <laughs> opposing it. <laughs> he's like this troublemaker, right? I guess you you don't know anything about it actually. Uh, I think he probably. I mean, the most logical thing probably is just that he uh, wants to prevent like he basically destroys all the military things and like the magicians because during the war a lot of civil civilians will will probably otherwise die, you know. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I I don't know anything about it because it wasn't shown stuff. Yeah, it was basically war bad, the movie. <laughs> yeah, war kinda. Bad. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's true. Make love, love good, war. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of to sum it up. Guys, do you have anything more to add to our discussion? I want to know what. Uh, I have two questions. First one is like, what did you like most? I I guess Josh kind of said it already, right? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I I didn't understand the question or uh, like audio. Oh shit! Uh, oh um. sorry. Uh, shoot. Uh, like what? What did you like most? What was your oh, favorite okay. part? Okay. Yeah. The spectacle and answer. What? <laughs> Uh, spectacle <laughs> like the whole like y animation the... thing the presentation yeah. oh i see okay like we also said it was a basically eye candy even if you turn your brain off yeah it's, it's, it's just candy, nice to look at to be honest like how yeah. joke <laughs> at the very <laughs> <laughs> i like how the most <laughs> no but if you if you if your best memories of a ghibli film is the animation isn't it like Kind it's of, a bit shallow yeah yeah isn't it kind of shallow because like okay i'm gonna s sound really cheesy but like <laughs> in every ghibli movie like beneath that beautiful animation there's also this beautiful wonderful Message. story that <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna that cry supports, <laughs> it's that supports this uh, entire construct mm. but if you like only compliment or if your only compliment lays on uh, lies on the outer shell i'd say of um the movie mm -hmm. isn't it like kind of um how do you say it pointless not not necessarily pointless but disappointing yeah, like mm. I mean, yeah i was disappointed mind, the first time i watched it, it i guess i'm going to think about that know. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean. Yes, yeah, story-wise, it's definitely disappointing. Mm. But I mean, if you mm. compare it to like Makoto Shinkai's movies, it's it's Makoto Shinkai's movies are just like nice to look at, but the story is like kind of whack. I I I I mean, the only Makoto Shinkai movie I watch is Weathering with You, but. Oh really? You didn't yeah, see your name. Did, Not yet. Wait, you didn't watch your name? What the heck? Oh Holy my god, I, I got outed. Michael, Remove him from the film talk. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, I um, guess. Yes, um. <laughs> okay, okay, Kiwi, what did you like uh, most about yeah, what did... House Moving Castle? Um, I think it's that you like every time you watch it, okay, I watched it two times but you like discover something new mm -hmm. and i like that it's very su mm. subtle i guess like a lot of stuff mm -hmm. is um for example what i kind of liked was when um when sophie entered the um like house moving castle calcifer said that he let her in right because mm -hmm. marco mm -hmm. was going like what the hell is she doing here like who, why did you let her mm -hmm. in and Casper said that he did it and if you see it um if you see it like Casper the heart of how like kind of Ooh. how let her into Ooh. his heart Dang. you know and i think that's kind of cool mm -hmm. that you can <clears throat> notice these little things from the dialogue and stuff mm. yeah i do think yeah i do think too that House Moving House is probably uh, looking at all the Ghibli films one where you can really digest more things when each time you watch it. Like there's always something yeah. new as you said. Mm, yeah. Well, yeah, that's also a quality I very much like. Yeah, and it's different because um, it's like you don't get it at first, I guess. Yeah. And a lot of stuff is mm -hmm. not explained and maybe um, maybe you shouldn't understand everything watching it maybe that's like the point i guess yeah that's yeah there's true. there's a lot of room for interpretation and that's always good and 
what I find interesting is that most of Ghibli films um, can be appreciated um, the first time uh, watching it. But mm -hmm. like the same thing applies for Howl's. But I think for Howl's especially, um, review uh, rewatching is kind of required to really get the entire gist of it somehow. But like the other films um, can be appreciated right away. Even if you yeah. show it to like a small kid or something. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you watch um, House like my... with your brother? No, but actually my brother watched it yesterday on his own. Oh. And the okay. only thing, the only thing he had to say was How that he found... fine looking a joke. <laughs> <laughs> More probably. That, that he found Mark very funny because... Oh. <laughs> He found uh, his beard very memorable, oh. like how he pulls his beard down. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. And I really like that detail as well. Mm. Yeah. It's... Like Mark is, re is really sweet. Yes, I, I think agree. Can't stress that enough. <laughs> One of the, we, I think we can all agree like the world they built is very, has is very detailed yeah. and yeah. memorable and just like likable with like every quirky thing they added mm, yeah 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 that's, that's what true. i like yeah in terms of scope yeah in yeah. terms of scope the world is definitely larger uh and more grandiose i guess than um the other worlds in in the other ghibli films mm -hmm. mm, yeah true. but i don't see the <clears throat> merit of it like i don't um, I don't think it's necessarily better if the word is like huger, mm. but because the larger the, your word gets, um, the less, you know, the less explorative you can get, <laughs> but the more you can leave up to the viewer, I guess. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see where you're coming from so oh, what did you say? conclusive thoughts maybe mm. or kiwi you had a second point um, yeah, no no it's actually I finished i think well okay. i feel like um i was kind of defending the movie a lot like but um yeah I think we two were the fen the defenders, and Joshua Josh was like the uh, the critic. <laughs> yeah, but I can yeah. definitely see um, where he's coming from, and I can agree to a lot as well. Um, yeah, same. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're they're because also like looking at the letterbox score, for instance. It's really I high, feel like right? I missed something. It's yeah, very high, four point two. Indeed. It's like one like of the highest, really high. I think, because yeah, Michael yeah. and I were, were looking at it after we finished watching. Yeah, right. We could at the end we could also talk about like where would we put um, mm -hmm. House Moving Castle in like the grander scheme of Ghibli films that we've watched. We, you know what we should do. We should a tier do list. Um, a tier list <laughs> of Ghibli films and Ghibli characters. Oh yeah, we should do that. Oh okay, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, honestly, let's do that sometime. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. We can also mm. talk about more movies from Ghibli. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there are a lot so of what that are we your... didn't watch. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of films we haven't watched yet. I mean... Ghibli Marathon. <laughs> yeah, Ghibli Marathon. Marathon. Uh, <laughs> so what are your, like, final ratings of the film? Has it changed, like, from the first time? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I actually yeah. bumped up my score today on Letterboxd. <laughs> To, really? Yeah, to, to, to what? what? Four? I, yeah, to four. I had uh, three and okay. a half. And then I was like, uh -huh. no, it should be a four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm at like, okay, that's funny because I know you gave it a three, Josh. 
I think oh, I yeah, I think I think I felt about it I felt about it like it was like a three out of five and now I have a three point five because I watched it again. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three point five um probably reflects best your opinions that you discussed with us today. <laughs> I actually wanted to give it a 3.5 as well, but... You don't do <laughs> you that. Couldn't just bring it you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't do it. <laughs> I know that feeling, man. Uh, but, hey, Michael, you Gotta don't do the, the thing Josh mm. does, right? You give half points, right? No, I don't uh, give No, I mean, he Michael. He doesn't, yeah. Uh, yeah so yes, yeah, I Michael do. Michael gives half points. Yeah, I like to keep make things as continuous as possible. <laughs> Mm. Oh yeah. Then, like, if I had the chance of like giving, if like the score were like from zero to one hundred, I would probably give it like a seventy-four or seventy-five. That's high. Well, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would do the same. I guess. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't like I don't like a rating scale from zero to hundred because then I could ask you, okay, why didn't you give it? Why didn't you bump it like one point higher? <laughs> Oh, you mean like okay. what's the difference between seventy four and seventy five? Like, is your opinion so so granular? You know, like what what held you held you back from giving it like um, one point? Yeah, I don't like I mean, that didn't either. You just... Because it's just like way too. Okay, okay, not point. maybe not one hundred, but you said like uh, okay, I can on. I mean, Josh, you're like the person you give like only whole thing, whole stars. Yeah. And, I'm, and then you had like the problem with, okay, I wish I could give it a 3.5, but I don't want to do it because, well, I'm, I, this is my normal rule of thumb that I just give whole scores. Isn't that limiting <laughs> yeah. too? Sure, but... It looks for, great. If I, if I want to give it a th like 3.5, yeah. I'm going to, like, because of my rule, I'm going to um, scrutinize the movie further. Like, for instance, I'm going to think, okay, why should I give it a four? Why should I give it a three? And if I, like, weigh these options, I notice, okay, um, actually, the negative things weigh more than the positives. That's why I converge, like, um, um, for my th uh, a three star rating. You know, so you... like my rule basically encourages me to think more about the movie, to weigh it, weigh, weigh it against my other ratings. For instance, I gave um, another film that I quite enjoyed a four star. Carol. And when I compared, like when when I compare my uh, my experience to Howl's, I noticed okay, um, well, I didn't had the same experience with Howl. That's why I'm going to like bump it down. So, yeah. I mean, if it works it for him, think right? More. Yeah, if it's yeah, like everyone just has like probably their own thing with ratings or how they, what they mean by their ratings. Yeah. 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 That's why you shouldn't like look at the um, rating on the the score, yeah, and... as much as you yeah, yeah. like do. And I do it way too often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to do it a lot as well. Yeah. But I think it's sometimes limiting, especially if you look at the rating before you watch the movie. Yeah, sure. But the thing is, you can do that when it comes to movies, because a movie is like, OK, if the movie is bad, you waste like two hours <laughs> of your day or of your life. So that's passable, right? But when it comes to like, I don't know, um, books that require more commitment and more time, I or think series. it's advisable to look at ratings because you want to spend like um a couple of hours on a book that you really hate in the end so but maybe yeah, you can take away medium. from i i feel like i've read books that i hated but i still took something away from it so it wasn't really wasting my time i think because if i think it's like so bad i want to throw up then i just don't <laughs> read it anymore yeah i mean yeah, yeah sure but but yeah i mean definitely look at ratings <laughs> i mean there's also a lot of uh, a lot to learn from i guess bad films mm. 
Sometimes it's just fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. I think the point just was that you shouldn't just your you shouldn't just only rely on ratings. Yeah. If you want to watch the next movie or yeah. something, you should also look into what, uh, why people like that movie and things like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You should definitely, yeah, form your own opinion and don't be like, um, I guess, a rating a slave. Sheep. For instance, if there's a classic and everybody uh, that everybody likes, um, don't f like. Be pressured to like, don't feel pressured also, to give yeah. it like a yeah. high score. Don't think just you're dumb because just because yeah. it's like don't, a classic. Yeah, don't think you're dumb because you didn't enjoy something a lot of yeah. people enjoyed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's like Josh did with Thor's Moving Castle. Yeah. <laughs> to like tie or it alien. all back together. Or oh, alien. Oh, alien, but that's uh, that's for the next talk we will have. Yeah. So. Um. Yes. Uh, TV, you said. You just wanted to stay for Howl's, right? Yes, yes, because I didn't watch yeah. the other movies. Yeah. But didn't okay. we want to um, put the movie movie in our like Ghibli list, like ranking, or is that for another video? I mean, I'm open. To both. Let's make another video for for, for the tier list. Okay, yeah. Like, let's okay. dedicate. Yeah, yeah. A video for this tier okay. list. Yeah. Okay. okay. That sounds Great. fun. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yes, I think. Um, so thank you, okay. Yeah, thank thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was awesome. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then okay. bye. See, see give ya. give the video a like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to hit the bell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> The usual. Yeah. Also, you can follow Kiwi on my anime <laughs> list in <laughs> Tumblr here. Uh, Jake, Jake, uh, I'm just joking. Cut that joking. out, please. We wouldn't do that, right? Cut that out. Uh, <laughs> okay, bye. Um, okay, bye. And we are back. Okay, we are, yeah, we're back. Now, we are going to talk about Alien and the sequel which is aliens. miles better aliens <laughs> not biased at all i see this will be a, this will be a heated discussion of course with spoilers yeah yeah and so yeah can i just say something about alien like can i okay. just put it put something out there so you can hate me for it oh okay i see yeah i, I think alien is a boring movie <laughs> i knew that would come and i and i think we okay. have to stop okay we have to stop this podcast right now uh, i'm quitting <laughs> <laughs> so no, okay, i can't i, I, guess, I can um, live with this alien is, um like really i guess um how do i put it like it's a very um hmm it's like, it's like very avant-garde, right? Uh, you can put it in the same category as like Blade Runner um, and I guess mm -hmm. good, great sci-fi films that came out in in um, in this time span. Like, okay, yeah, I, okay yeah. I completely appreciate its merits, like um, the um, uh, practical effects, mm. the atmosphere, I guess, but... I'm sorry, um, the atmosphere wasn't really compelling enough. Uh, okay. uh, and other than that, the characters just feel like so... Okay, they're authentic, right? I watched authentic, some interviews. Yeah. I watched some interviews and the crew uh, prepared itself very um, thoughtfully for, for this film. And mm -hmm. they, I think they studied like how, um, I guess, real crews behave... Um, on, on a ship or something like that and they try to kind of emulate the atmosphere the interactions the dynamics and okay um the crew was kind of authentic but authenticity doesn't make you immediately like like the characters and the characters yeah. for me just kind of fell short to be honest okay uh maybe i should then give my take on alien um uh, mm -hmm. i i've watched it I've watched it twice now. Uh, mm -hmm. This was my second time for this podcast. And 
while I have to say, arguably, that Aliens might be the better film, I'm not Damn. agreeing, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying I can see why someone would say that, and that, that there are very legitimate reasons to say so. But I still love Alien a lot. I just... I, I don't get how you can't be compelled by the atmosphere. I think it's very beautifully made. As you said, um, let me finish. Uh, it's beautiful. It's vivid. I mean, the imagery, like by H.R. Geiger and all these other great science fiction artists, it just really... Uh, it's, it's amazing. I don't know. You wouldn't see this kind of stuff to nowadays. Like, very many of these alien designs feel generic compared to today. I mean, uh, today yeah. feel comparatively to um, <laughs> to that period. And I just... I mean, for me, it's just a very simple, like, film where, obviously, horror film where basically everybody is, like, stuck somewhere and they have to... They try to... And they have, like, a monster to find and I don't know. And I yeah. just think it's for that it's very uh, a very effectful movie. I have to say it's mm -hmm. not a very scary movie. If I had to rate it as a genre film of horror, I wouldn't rate it very high. But I think as a movie in general, for the atmosphere and um, also the characters, I did feel for them. Even though I mean I can I get your point that they are not very likable, but. I could still feel for them because the situation is obviously very, very, well, shitty. And mm -hmm. I, I just, and also the, like, it is a big package that just works, where everything works. Everything just fits for me, except mm -hmm. maybe some okay. effects that look dated. And yeah, it's, to me, still a very great movie to be enjoyed. Maybe just keep in mind that it's older, not necessarily the most scary it's, film. Yeah. And oh, I mean, okay, to like its significance also, like with Ripley, we also have like, not to play the female empowerment card, it's, but it's also one of these movies that mm -hmm. put like <laughs> female protagonists in like uh, the spotlight. And I appreciate it for that as well yeah. in a historical context. Like, I can see that Alien is very revolutionary in many aspects, um, including that um, uh, woman empowerment aspect. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, no, another point. Because, th yeah, how many, um, oh, okay. I, guess, I guess, female protagonists did we have um, back then? Not not many. Not many, and, yeah. But also, you, you talked about the efficiency of the film, but um, at the same time, you didn't find it very, like terrifying i guess but the thing is I I, okay i did have some scum it, it did scare me uh a bunch mm -hmm. some, a couple of times but, but it yeah i mean it's just, not the most scary film that's what i'm saying yeah but everything in alien is made um to be scary like this film the film tries so hard to be a horror film i would yeah, even kind, put it i would like we, yeah, you have is, like but, these two categories right sci-fi and horror but okay wait um yeah for me it's not very effective to be honest like so, so the first half um let's talk about let's talk about specifics so in the f in the first half okay i just think the movie is way too slow like it builds its atmosphere um but like it's not that it's not something you haven't seen before so the first well, I mean, in that in really that period, slowly. it was something that you haven't seen before. In general, like the whole thing with sci-fi dystopia back then didn't necessarily exist on like the big movie the theaters, you know. And like yeah, you had Star Wars in nineteen seventy-seven, and then you had like nineteen seventy-nine Aliens, like uh, Alien. I mean, yeah, but for instance, you had you, you had you had. Um, 2001 uh, in 1967 but that's not that's not a um, there was a spaceship there was a sp yeah i'm saying it's but this wasn't a dystopian like this view of the future being dirty and kind of shitty 
was also something alien well, did. Well, but you didn't get you didn't get to see the whole world. Like yeah, but you um, most got of the time you spend on that spaceship, and they land on that desolate planet, and desolate, they discover yeah. um. Yeah, desolated planet, and um, they discover like this layer of the of that. Um, well, they discovered that they discovered that xenomorph. spaceship, and in that, yeah, like the layer of eggs. Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, but the thing is, um, you praise the dystopian world, but the film doesn't really put much effort into the world building. Um, I mean, the spaceship design is. I mean, I have a soft spot for like. All yeah. miniature things, like all these space miniatures, I love them. Uh, but also like the interior, it's, it has like the air ducts and everything, like it's the very machinery. Detailed, yeah. yeah, it's, it's very, very detailed. detailed. I love it. Also like the and procedural the, things, it feels very grounded. I like it. Yeah, and the enclosed space really kind mm -hmm. of accentuate uh, the danger, the... Um, an expectancy um, of the narrative and of the danger. Yeah, I mean... And, yeah, yeah sure, that's what I praise, right? Um, the film is relatively old, the practicals are nice, the miniature um, is really, like, well made, but um, but you don't get that, m like, uh, many shots of the mi miniature, though. Um, well, which miniature is Hawking Mostly about? the, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, okay, the uh, miniature is cool, but I believe you get only which, one shot. Which one? Like, do we talk about the alien, or do we talk like the that alien costume? Are we talking about the alien costume? Are we talking about the spaceship? Are we talking about the smaller spaceship with which okay. which we landed on that planet? Um, you said you really you had the soft spot for for miniatures, right? Yeah, I um, I enjoyed all the designs of like the spacecraft and everything, and I enjoyed that they were miniatures. Yes, but they're not that prominent, right? Because mo mostly the yeah, interior is shown. I mean, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure that was just nice one of the things. But if you don't show it, what? Uh, well, okay. There's a point to be made that you, if you don't show a lot of something, then it becomes more effectful. Like with the alien itself, that is also not prominently shown in the movie. But I, for me at least, it makes it scary and it works. Yeah, I was actually talking about the <laughs> miniature. Yeah, I but, know you're um... talking about the miniatures, but I, there can be. I mean, you don't want to always show the good shots, you know. As in, you also yeah. want to tease a bit. So, sure, not. <laughs> why? It's just one of these aspects that I really liked. I mean, also, I found the interior mm -hmm. very well designed and very, like, lived in, you know? It's mm -hmm. not so, so clean as in, like, Space Odyssey. It has a very dirty character, very, like, uh, you know, as if it was like a garbage truck or something. Mm -hmm. Very much lived in. I love, I liked that. Also with like how they communicated with mother, it was, I enjoyed that too. With like the inquiry. Yeah, everything standard. like surrounding the crew and their Yeah, the, just the world building in general. It's really authentic. But, yeah. um, and I get your point that the less you show something, the more significant it becomes. Mm -hmm. And it definitely, um, kind of applies to the xenomorph and yeah. let me yeah i anticipate that um one aspect you didn't really like about aliens is that the xenomorphs are um not ah, shrouded in um in uh, mysticism like um the xenomorphs are way too that. often aliens i can right? accept the thing is for me i, I think I you don't didn't like it i enjoy i enjoy both movies uh yeah but um but you know, you're dealing with a different genre, and in the second one, yeah. it's less of a horror movie and more of a science fiction film, and action film, should I, in particular. So, um, yeah, in that but... case, I can, I'm completely fine with it, and mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. they didn't go overboard. It wasn't like, uh, oh, we have millions of xenomorphs running to them, and they shoot, they are shoot, having like shots showing that. It was still mm -hmm. very sparingly used, and having that uh, kind of 
uh, restrained, despite it being a, an action film, mm-hmm, is what yeah. it makes it uh, like a good action film for me. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, mean, I guess yeah. Alien is kind of more s- subdued and just um, its scale is smaller. It's more yeah, self-contained. Small, it's small and yeah. yeah. I just yeah. As Maybe a whole- you can convince me of my opinion about Alien. But I don't know. Just it, it, just really, the first half is disappointing. Wait, sound. did you like the second half though? When they uh, a bit more to be honest. I mean, okay, wait. More. It's like the second half. Are we saying the second half is when they, uh, when like the the alien comes out of the guy's yeah. chest? Okay, yeah. okay. That's probably in the midpoint of the film. Yeah, that's like the giant shift. Yeah. Yeah. And um. Like, for a person, like, imagine you're an audience member in 1979, where mm-hmm. Alien is basically presented um, mm-hmm. to the entire world, all right? Yeah. And you sit there. Yeah. And um, suddenly, that midpoint hits, right? Yeah. Um, like, that shock, mm-hmm. that uh, that surprise, even, yeah. is, even for is the like, crew. invaluable. Yeah. Like, but even the actors didn't know that it would be that grotesque. Exactly. So their reactions like are the, very authentic, yeah. Yeah, and that scene is so, like, vivid and memorable and also very popular mm-hmm. that um, by today's standards, every everyone knows it, like... Yeah. Like, and that takes so much away from the movie. I, yeah, there's a point to be made that, like, the popularity of Alien kind of kills its uh, yeah. thing. Itself, um, basically. <laughs> ironic. Yeah. But also, like, the yeah, the whole franchise also that it got blown to where it now is. Mm-hmm. It should have ended with Alien 3. Or Prometheus, I don't know. But, you know, the anticipation is still there. Like, even though you know what's going to happen, you still... There's, like, still this build up that so many people like which mm-hmm. of course as you probably realized i didn't really uh like because for me it's like it's way too slow nothing really happens so that's mm-hmm. why i'm always comparing like the two halves because the shift is like really um there's no gradient it's like the shift is really uh sudden and prompt and i really liked it so yeah that's the film, that's definitely yeah. something that I agree with that is very good. Even though I enjoyed this for some as well. I mean, that's obviously something that I can do both. I can enjoy the first mm-hmm. half and still like that shift to the second. Yeah, and in the first half, they could have done something like character building on something. Because honestly, um, all characters, they just seem so like uninteresting. Well, uh, I don't yeah, know. I really... Th- I mean, okay, there wasn't like, I have to say, it wasn't like, like we were building like a very emotional bond with them. Yeah, But you exactly. understood their motivations. Like, for example, like the um, black guy and Higgs. The cyborg? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, like guy. those two. And um, they were like, you know, they wanted a race, for example. And they had like their own problems. They wanted to go back home. I mean, it was like a commercial spaceship, right? And they were just... Mm-hmm. kind of there for you know a job and they wanted to go mm-hmm. back and they want and these two were then complaining about how much less money they made than the rest of the crew and i i don't know this this inner conflict in the crew i found made enhanced only in the experience and made them also somewhat interesting as well but that's i mean if this is like the extent of the character building, I think it's disappointing. I mean, what because do you want? Do you want like a backstory like, to every character? I don't know. Their personalities are like so uh, indistinguishable. Nah, like, nah. Wait, no. They are distinguishable. <laughs> like Hicks is, they, Hicks is yeah. like this uh, character that just kind of stands in the shadow of like the black dude. I don't. Was it? Wait, was it Berg? I don't remember anymore. No, Berg is, is the guy <laughs> from the second movie. <laughs> oh, frick. Yeah, I'm on a wrong <laughs> page. Uh, any, I mean, okay. I have to agree that 
the characters are not necessarily the main part of the film. I mean, or yeah. the most interesting and therefore, but they are also, I should say it like this, they're not the main thing you watch the movie for. It's just a, but, a but crew. Michael, Michael yeah? if yeah? it's a horror film and there are characters that you don't really well, care I mean, about, isn't it like a... Why then? Yeah. Do you care about every kid in Nightmare on Elm Street or something? No, but you need at least like a handful. I mean, okay, I can get you behind can care uh, Ripley. Ripley, yeah, but exactly. Like, the others, like it's like this this um, horror film cliche, right? Every everyone except your main character dies. Like it's exactly this this cliche. Well, it wasn't a cli and it wasn't a cliche when it was made. Okay, well. Hmm. Or was I mean you had horror films before that we had ho we had like we had like American Psycho or, or would you count that? Oh, I mean Psycho, Wait, not the American Psycho. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah uh, Psycho is definitely horror film. Yeah, but Psycho is more innovative. No, I would. And I mean, what kind of alien? Alien? It's we 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 are yeah. complaining about things that came because of Alien, right? We're complaining about these cliches because Alien made them so prominent. Because Alien was actually that influential. Yeah, but the thing is, this, this cliche arises if you basically pay attention or dedicate much more to one character than the others. Because then, I guess, subconsciously, um, you don't bond for the other characters. You, you can't really identify with them um, as well as with the i guess central character and then you kind of expect that everybody else is going to die anyway yeah but so that it, can you blame the, a, yeah. like you can't fault the movie for that though right yeah I, I just think that if you do a horror film and you want it to be effective then you need um i guess well-rounded characters uh you need to feel for these characters well, they, other than that you they just did have think, their struggles oh, cool I mean, they, okay, I mean, we're both agreeing that they are not necessarily the most, the most likable, especially characters. But if we are talking about character development, I mean, the other crew, honestly, like, okay, comparing to Aliens, we only like the other crew because, you know, they have more of a, char more of like, a likable character, you know, Hudson yeah. complaining, <laughs> and that's kind of funny, and we then fear for Hudson. And also, Vasquez is, yeah, is kind of this. Uh, they're less subtle, exactly. They're yeah. less subtle, but they're not in depth. Alien and aliens are very comparable. If we look away from Ripley, Ripley, are, of course, gets more development, but you can't fault Alien for being the first film so that Ripley becomes less depthful in comparison to like Alien 2. Uh, I mean, aliens. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, just. <laughs> Yeah, but I just yeah couldn't. I, I can say quite... they're just less likable. They're just normal people, and I think I like that. It's just you know there are movies that are kind of manipulative with just ma by making every character likable and just then killing them. You know that's also somewhat negative because you're then manipulating the audience into carrying someone that then dies, yeah, so you can enough. get a reaction. Enough, yeah. So. I like that Alien is fairly neutral on its characters. It's neutral, but for me, it's way too neutral. The characters are so like they're just normal know. people, and yeah, I yeah yeah and I guess, you know, I guess, but normal isn't always the best, right? It's not necessarily the best, but it's definitely a valid approach, and one that's very legitimate if you're making a horror movie and want the audience to feel, you know. If if they would bring like just badasses like in Alien Aliens, then obviously uh, you would you would be less like scared yeah, or sure. something. I'm not I'm not comparing the crew of Alien to uh, well, Aliens. Well, I think we know our biases though. <laughs> yeah, sure, but I just yeah maybe hmm. I just couldn't connect to them. Okay. Yeah, I I get perhaps it. It's because yeah. they're two normal purposes. It's because I just uh, found them way too uninteresting because they're too normal. 
Like they have they have no quirks. Yeah, they're just too normal, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Ashton is complaining because. Yeah, I get it. Like the other things are, I guess, um, exquisite. <laughs> The, mm -hmm. the creature design is, is yeah like the xenomorph design it's yeah. awesome yeah did you actually know that like um this may sound i don't know i i just want to know your opinion of it i guess um actually like the creature design for the xenomorph is kind of um, like the whole inspiration for the idea of making it look that way to make it scary was basically male rape you know with everything huh. of the xenomorph looking so phallic and then also sticking its mouth into your mouth. Thought, yeah, and oh. yeah, like HR Geiger, um, at least from what I know, was inspired by these things. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, not necessarily sexuality itself, just rape. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Or assault. Oh. A bit. That's good to know, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's kind. Of, I mean, I talked to uh, we we have like a. Uh, I talked to a friend about it, and he was like, "Yeah, that took me out," and I was like, oh, no, I I think I find that just interesting." Mm -hmm. To know, I don't know. It doesn't take me out. I just, for me, the cinema was still something just, yeah. Very mysterious, and a uh, mysterious. Yeah, imaginative. with like imaginative, um, immaculate, immaculate, and a, a perfect being. <laughs> no, but it's it, like, so, yeah, it's like, um, I mean, the design, uh, uh the, the, the popularity, mm. um, is just a testament to, to the greatness of, of this creature. Yeah, HR it's, it's almost just, like uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's almost um cultural, like it has ingrained it's in pop culture, culture, yeah, so much that yeah, everybody knows it if they look. Everybody at it. knows it, yeah. yeah. It's but the at alien. Least they have seen it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. I mean, not by name, of course, because it's fairly an old movie, and not everybody yeah. cares about movies. But everybody knows this is like. Also with like uh, the also... face huggers and everything, I just also like the way they kind of like this creature is just at first, uh, you know, it's like a paras, it's a parasite, mm -hmm. and then yeah. you can't also kill it because of like the acid in its blood, like that its blood is acid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's very well thought out. It's a very well thought out creature that's very unique, and very well yeah just for a crew to tackle it definitely makes it yeah. more intense for them to and have face something like this yeah yeah right and um the xenomorph is like also a highly intelligent creature it's like n not a i guess um a dumb creature that uh dangerous just because of its mass it's it's mm. a brute strength or something. Yeah. But, um, like, the xenomorph is, intellectually speaking, uh, really advanced. Yeah, that, and that's that what well. makes it so dangerous. And um, I mean, it, like, moving through the air docks and everything, like... Exactly, yeah. Things like this, it is very much and like the hunter in a movie. Like, <laughs> and yeah, they're the hunted. Like, um, this apex predator, right? And how mm. it uh, sneaks itself into uh, the... Uh, into Ripley's shuttle in the end, yeah, to deliver that final climax, like that was awesome because you thought, mm -hmm. okay, everything is over, yeah, everything is and over, then it picks up the um, the tension again, yeah, and the same thing happened in uh, Aliens. Mm -hmm. And honestly, in Aliens, it's done really nicely, like it, I, I didn't expect it in Aliens. Uh, that the uh, xenomorph queen basically yeah. grabs itself oh, onto right. the ship and yeah. impales the impales uh, the android. Um, yeah. The android, yeah. <laughs> that was, that was awesome. indeed yeah. awesome. With like, yeah. But awesome. like, um, they. I I mean, okay, it's not the fault of the first one, but 
I guess um can't you kill it um like can't you kill it um in another way except flushing it down the airlock? <laughs> I mean they did it yeah, twice it's, now it's, and it, it kind of <laughs> got repetitive. Even though okay, it's only well they killed um, a lot of the xenomorphs um in aliens using just guns. <laughs> Well, basically, yeah, right. I mean, okay, nothing against <laughs> aliens, but, you know, you had to, I guess, if they were, you know, the Xenomorph is fairly overpowered, kind of, so you kind of, I guess, yeah. turned, like, the acid thing down, or just said, like, okay, don't don't think about it too hard, with, like, <laughs> you know, gutting them down <laughs> one <laughs> after one, and then technically, like, shouldn't technically be the ground completely... Shouldn't be, be, there be a yeah, hole right. and everything? <laughs> yeah, right. What the hell? So it's it's like yeah. In the end, especially does Ripley have like an invisible cloak that protects her from this um, acidic f blood? It's like weird. Yeah. And okay, let's let's do this sh shift to aliens, right? Okay. Uh, so, I th I, some um, one point for alien as well. If, I said it was a simple story. A sim at least on the surface of it, I do think there are also, like, I like also, like, the details in the story, like, this lit those little twists, as we said, with, like, the alien sneaking itself onto the ship, or yeah. that Bishop, uh, not Bishop, <laughs> Ash, turned out <laughs> yeah, to sure. be an, an android, and, like, the whole thing with, like, the corporation wanting mm -hmm. to, like, that basically the main mission is to just get that alien for bioweapons. I also yeah. found that aspect interesting. It was a, a great reveal f and definitely something, you know, a good twist mm -hmm. of its time. Um, yeah, those t those tiny little um, details or twists, variations, yeah, them, are, yeah, are quite ingenious. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a it adds to the subtlety of the movie in general. And the and yeah, the atmosphere for me as well. I don't yeah, know. yeah, uh, and. What James Cameron did, um, yeah. so James Cameron, man, James Cameron um, remade many things from the first movie, like for mm -hmm. for instance the bird character, um, his motivation kind of. Um, He's basically the representation of the company. Yeah, and yeah. Um, uh, his motivations kind of overlap with uh, those of Ash. Like um, he wants to capture, um, like an egg. Mm -hmm. Or the alien itself, I guess. So it's yeah. a morph. Yeah. And he for wants to monetary do it for purposes, purposes yeah. purposes and stuff. So well, for not, financial purposes. Yeah, financial. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he's not interested We're, in the alien itself, obviously. Yeah. He's and, just greedy. Um, a Jew. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm, ju I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and, but what I find interesting is that Ash in the first uh, film is an android, while Berg is a human. Yeah. And like the. <laughs> wrong movie technically because that's the theme of Blade Runner but yeah Bishop acts more yeah, right? like a compassionate human than Burke and Burke yeah, is like more if, like a robot and Bishop was quite yeah, likable Bishop, though I liked him yeah I, it, I think it's nice definitely to like um, I mean I, I think we can't really talk about aliens without mentioning some things about alien I think it's nice no, that like can't. yeah it, it's nice that they that the twist in the second film is or I shouldn't say twist but like the thing in the second film is that the android is like this good person that mm -hmm. saved them as well and helped them. Uh, I think that's just a very nice way of... I mean, android are, androids are mm -hmm. at first something neutral and that they like play with how Ripley sees them uh, is very nice. Yeah. And a, yeah. a and good it addition. basically subverts the expectations um, you of got the from viewer, the first yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah it's definitely. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a um, <laughs> quite uh, ingenious what Cameron did there. Yeah, I think um, I, it's, it's basically Aliens is like a very straight science fiction action film for me with mm -hmm. very clear themes about, for example, family and I mean, I like oh wrote to God. you from uh, whatever, like uh, yeah. basically meaning about the yeah motherhood, motherhood, and um, yeah, basically companionship. the companionship, companion. I mean, yeah. you can you can throw terms um, 
into that pool of themes. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, um, so Aliens, we both agree that Aliens is, like, really, um, first off, an action film, right? It's an f- action film. Uh, horror, it's a very good one. Horror comes secondary. Yeah. But On, I still sci-fi, find yeah. Aliens to be sometimes pretty terrifying, like. Horror, yeah, definitely. But it's, it's mostly tension, right? Um, yeah, uh, for example. mostly excel at, um, like, th- there's a distinction between um horror and terror mm. for me aliens is more terrifying mm. the line is really vague but um i think i get what you mean uh, i'm thinking of the scene where um ripley is saving newt from yeah. becoming like one of these uh basically you know another uh you know Morse? <laughs> yeah basically yeah. <laughs> uh and then they you know in it <laughs> um inadvertently like go to like the alien queen without mm-hmm. uh, unintentionally and that was very terrifying as you said because like yeah, right. tension there and yeah i mean just <laughs> Aliens, um, yeah, um, relies mostly on, um, terror, f- uh, terror, because mm. Alien isn't that, um, I guess, unpredictable as Alien, mm-hmm. and it uses that it uses that uh, trait to basically um, really keep you in your seat, right? And Wait, which one was more I unexpected? Uh, just to, I, I, th- I think I missed the S at the end. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, now. <laughs> Alien is... Aliens is less... Unpredict... It's less unpredictable as Alien. So Alien is more unpredictable. That's why mm. it, it is classified as a horror film. Rather yeah. than as... Yeah, as an action film. But I have to say, but, Aliens does have its twists, like with uh, a lot of basically xenomorph mobs, like jump uh, being on ships and then killing the pilot. For example, at the, yeah. when they thought, okay, let's go back to the ship, let's yeah, evacuate. Nice yeah, things like that. I do think. Yeah, but, I mean, you mentioned that there were somewhat hollow elements in mm-hmm. there. So, but honestly, like um. You know the law of uh, diminishing returns? Uh, I think I've heard of it, yeah. It's like if you, uh, as we mentioned before, like if you show a thing way too often, yeah. uh, way too frequently, um, its significance basically gets reduced um, each consecutive, consecutive time. Mm-hmm. And that's what I kind of got from Aliens. Of course, it's it's fun. It's, it's fun blasting um, yeah. xenomorphs. Mm-hmm. But, but of course, Aliens, it gets less scary. Yeah, in Alien, the the one xenomorph is like this um, intelligent entity that yeah. um, you the can't predator. really catch, right? But like in the um, other film and mm-hmm. the sequel, yeah, its traits get uh, its traits get completely like diminished, and you now you get like um, uh, masses of xenomorphs that yeah. basically um, are like an army of I don't know orcs, you know? Yeah, basic. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, like the the asset obviously is like a big, um, uh, you know, a big obstacle because you obviously can get hurt if you go too close mm-hmm. enough, and then it splatters all over you, and then you're badly wounded. But mm-hmm. yeah, it definitely loses some of its power it, yeah. because it has to be like in this action movie format. They have to somehow up the ante. With like introducing the xenomorph yeah. mother, uh, the xenomorph queen, I should say, and uh, yeah. like all the just this colony and like mm-hmm. on this planet, so like the terrain is bigger. It is definitely a bigger movie and also has more beats in the plot. Yeah, because you have uh, yeah that many characters. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, that many oh, that kill get killed off partially at the midpoint, but yeah. <laughs> yeah um 
um, to get back to the xenomorph real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so in the context of this uh, of the action genre, yeah, it's completely fine. Yeah, um, but just the xenomorph itself, mm -hmm. I feel like gets diminished. Like yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but it, it was necessary, kind still, of. Yeah, but it I mean, somehow I, still works. Yeah, I, it works also for me. You have yeah. to. I mean, if we didn't mention it enough, the second film is by James Cameron, mm -hmm. and the first and movie is by Ridley notorious. Scott. <laughs> yeah, and James, yeah, James Cameron is more like the straight story guy, yeah. and uh, Ridley Scott is more of atmosphere, and it really like mm -hmm. feel like uh, see you can see that in a, both of these movies. Uh, something I want to mention when we are talking about like the depiction of the Xenomorph, what yeah. I also really like in Alien, since it's also, I guess, an action, a, a, a horror movie, um, mm -hmm. like the shots where, if, for example, like one character like Hicks uh, has to search for the kitten. And then mm -hmm. like the shots where we see little, um, you know, slime from the Xenomorph. And then it's slowly descending, hovering over him. Like all this oh, stuff, yeah. it's really, it, it's perfect in how... It basically presenting this how scary this xenomorph is and uh what a great killer it is because well he didn't see him or uh -huh. yeah like acknowledges uh yeah basically as if he was like an assassin's creed or something <laughs> <laughs> stealthy but, um... stealthy that's what i want to say yeah. like i really like your point um that Ridley Scott is like more the atmos atmosphere guy mm -hmm. because it's it's really um, fascinating that two directors who are so different in their approach mm. can basically put together um, two films that feel um, continuous, yeah, coherent, and that yeah, and that uh, complement each other so well. Yeah, like definitely. Ridley Scott is that is more, I guess. Um, he pays attention um, to details, um, mm -hmm. as you said before. And James Cameron is like this this tough guy, I guess, who just um, just uh, interested more in the, the big picture. Yeah, like, yeah, the spectacle, and still has like a message at heart and everything. I mm -hmm. I like all. I also like how like the story where they begin is very interesting. Of like you know uh, Ripley. Like, they really fleshed out Ripley, and it is good that they did that, because it's, mm -hmm, like, an action yeah. movie, and we have to feel for her more than necessarily in the first part, with, like, her, like, basically being stranded for five se 57 mm -hmm. year years, and then, like, knowing her mother, her mother, her daughter is dead, so that she could, and that basically, also just the relation of Ripley with, like, Newt, and... I mean, they, they, the parallels are undeniable, right? Between between like their lives, uh, which were yeah. shattered by the xenomorph, and then them bonding and her becoming like her mm -hmm. their substitute mother, and those themes. Ta Cameron really nails that, and also like the corporation is shown again, uh, first as being somewhat, you know, you think Burke isn't that of a douche at first but then he yeah, really then just, he just turns into like, a snake goddamn idiot yeah and, and arrogant asshole mm. and just mm. the cameron was really smart at how he like mm -hmm. put ripley yeah. back onto the field basically and how he expanded on her i just loved everything about that and what I also really liked about um, Cameron's take is that, okay, you have this huge crew in the mm -hmm. beginning, right? Yeah. Um, they all, like, really quirky, <laughs> but shallow. Yeah, um, they're, like, uh, but, they're basically tough guy, a tough yeah, military tough guy. Guys. Yeah. But um, I think it was the midpoint where, mm -hmm. like, half of the crew gets killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you have like a handful of characters who you didn't pay really much attention to at the beginning, but now you're like more, you feel more connected to them. Mm -hmm. And they because they also feel, show their, I guess, true colors, you know, with Hudson. Yeah, right. He acted like this, uh, you know, we are going to murder them. We are yeah. going to save, we are 
no worries. We are awesome. We can, we are the Marines. We are tough. We are mean. And then he's like, game over, man. And everything. <laughs> game over, man. Game yeah. Over. Yeah. Um, so he cuts the crew down so that you can basically focus feel for, yeah. for just a few key characters. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's, yeah. I, I mean, uh, wait, wait. I said Higgs a lot. Was there yeah, also? You said Higgs. I, I, I was confused because Higgs is actually the guy in Aliens, right? Yeah, he's in Aliens. I'm confused with yeah. which one I meant in Alien right now. I think you meant that. Um, um, wait. I think you meant. Um, what's his name? Brad. Yeah, I meant Brad. Brad? Brad? Yeah, Brad. I meant like okay. the one that was always like in the shadow of the other one. You know? In the shadow of the black guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, <laughs> I should... I should have maybe... Mm, like... Go over the names again. Because Aliens was the more recent film mm -hmm. I saw. So... I Sorry that I got things mixed up, I guess. Yeah. No, it's fine. Oh, okay. I was just a little bit confused, but... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, everything was planned. This was a quiz on the viewer if he actually saw yeah. the movie. <laughs> Definitely. It was uh, a test. It was a test. You did well. Um, <laughs> um, wait, I Where want to talk we? about yeah. the, I think, the ending, right? Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, because, yeah, Cameron obviously pays homage to the uh, ending of Alien. Like, by... Um, by having the tension peak again in the very end when the xenomorph shows up yeah yeah mm -hmm. and um before that you had the narrow escape right mm -hmm. so did you expect um the last i guess climactic moment or were you like caught off guard like me i think i was very caught off guard the first time i saw it the second time not yeah. so much especially if you're um if you talk about like the whole, I mean, this movie is also about like motherhood, as you said, mm -hmm. and yeah, basically, I mean, obviously, uh, Ripley is basically a surrogate mom for mm -hmm. Newt, Newt and then protecting yeah. her, but then, like, on a grander scheme, you have to question yourself if the alien queen isn't doing the same thing, mm -hmm. yeah, right, right, make, right, right, yeah, like she was. They were on the call. First was the spaceship with the eggs, then came the colony. Mm -hmm. And the colony basically uh, took their place a bit, so they kind of attacked, you know? Yeah, that's a matter of perspective. It, yeah, okay, it's of course it's a matter of perspective because, yeah. well, they're still parasitic creatures and monsters. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, if you think about it a little bit, like further yeah sure it's not it's not that xenomorphs are necessarily bad mm -hmm. it's just i mean both f factions are fighting for survival yeah like ultimately. that's that's ultimately what it is and yeah. then of, it makes sense that kind of the two <laughs> two mother characters are fighting yeah. against one another yeah what i hoped um like what I hope they could um, improve on a little bit. In Aliens or that, Alien? In Aliens, yeah. Okay. Was that um, they could have made Newt a little more, like, cunning. I mean, um, she... she, I mean, she okay, knew she survived, right? She, she survived and she obviously knows a lot about the vents. You know? Sure, yeah, but... She helped them. Wish... Uh, actively yeah. also, at the end. Like, she navigated them through that maze. That maze, all right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, that sacrifice, man, with like yeah, Vasquez, man, sacrifice with Vasquez and the other guy. Yeah. Vasquez basically being like, "Yeah, I always hated you," and Gorman yeah. then committing suicide <laughs> <laughs> with like the bomb. It was awesome. It was awesome, and yeah. like Vasquez is like one of those characters you you just kind of like somehow, even though they're not that. Uh, None of them are deep. Can. Yeah, I think. Like Hicks, Newt, and Ripley are like the emotional core. 
because they're basically sure, a, yeah. they're basically a surrogate family. Yeah. And yeah, Vasquez is just. She just looks she, very. She's just a badass. Stoic. Mm. Uh, yeah, she's just badass. Um, I mean, the first her, her, thing she does, like the um, after, yeah, she, <laughs> the, after waking up from, um, from hibernating or what's it called? Uh, yeah, I think hyper hyper sleep, something like that. Yeah, she she does pull ups. Yeah, she does pull ups, <laughs> and she um has the same one liners as the dudes. You know, yeah, when the one I, guy comes to her with like, "Hey, aren't you, aren't you sometimes um." misled to for being a man and she's like yeah. no we're you and it's funny and you like it and they're likable yeah you could argue though that vasquez is kind of you know in a on a cynical way she's kind of just this very male acting female badass that is very cliche kind of i mean there's this cliche yeah. about these kinds of you know where they basically are just men but they are female Exactly, but even though it's so cliched, I, yeah, I don't you, know, it's, it still works. It like, still works, yeah, I agree. Because if you have cliches, um, like those characters and mm -hmm. their behavior, you yeah. just really have to um, rejoice in it, I guess. You have to really indulge in it. Um, you ha really have to embrace the clichéness of your characters. And Aliens does that kind of really perfectly. Mm, yeah, and in turn, you just really like the characters. Yeah, and at the second part, I mean, the shift also in the mm -hmm. <laughs> in aliens, they, you know, they are not just whole always badass. You know, Vasquez is all is also very, you know, she also fears the Xen Wars and things. Yeah, so. she's also very caring, I guess. Even though it's not yeah. that explicitly shown. Yeah. Like, they're all human after all, to make a yeah. that fuck reference. <laughs> uh, what did you ge give um, Aliens? I like, think what I, score? I gave, Ali I gave both Alien and Aliens a 4.5. 4.5, okay. Yeah, that I, seems I, reasonable. Yeah, you have given it a 5. And I completely I five, approved yeah. that. Love that movie. Thanks. Yeah, I just... It was a blast. Like, come on, man. <laughs> it's really great. It's re It was really entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it's just... Uh, every beat, like, you know, every twist and turn and the second one is just a very well-made, intense action yeah. film with, like, a good emotional core. Exactly. And yeah. even though it's, high, it's, it's, less, it's, it's less subtle compared to... Um, the predecessor and let's like, focus about the alien yeah and it has depth right mm -hmm. like many films um lack the letter yeah i mean we come to john wick JK. One, right what um many films lack depth mm -hmm. um in favor of entertainment mm. and i think like alien nails both aspects so alien or complain. aliens yeah Aliens, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, aliens. okay. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it is a popcorn movie if you want it to be, yeah. but there's also a heart beneath it. Like Hal in his house. <laughs> <laughs> nice cross-reference. <laughs> hey! Um, do you want to close this podcast with some, like, um, other activities of ours? For instance, what movies have you watched lately? Uh, I mean, <laughs> Alien and Aliens are the ones that I watched or, lately. Or like TV shows. Uh, TV shows, I mean, okay, I'm currently I'm watching Jojo's Bizarre Adventure still. Yep. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in the fourth because season. Because it's a long-ass series. It's not as long as freaking One Piece or something, like one of our okay. friends is watching. <laughs> uh, mo multiple friends of ours. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I... If you're into an shonen anime with like a strong emphasis on cool fights and just a slick look mm -hmm. and great music, then JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a good series. So like the first part is pretty slow and um, you have to get used to the style, I think. It's mm -hmm. very over the top, 
as some of VS animes are, uh, but Jojo in Bizarre Adventure in particular, and as the name suggests, this is a very bizarre story. So like, mm -hmm. basically, it follows like the, um, like Jojo doesn't reference a single person. It always references one character of like the Jo, jo Star generation. So like, the the show is actually over many many generations, generations. of okay. Jojos basically, and oh, and okay. it's very. It's a very ridiculous story, and not not everything makes sense. A lot of fights, you're just when you think about it very hard, you're like, "Wait a moment, this shouldn't be happening." <laughs> but okay. it's just it's just very fun. The emotional core is there, and also every one of these, since it's playing in different time periods, they also have, mm -hmm. you know, different looks, different styles, and. Mm, Responding to that, it's just very entertaining and very colorful. Really just... Okay. I mean, I today I feel like the guy that's always just saying, oh yeah, the presentation is just awesome. <laughs> but the presentation is really awesome. Right? That's why I would really uh, recommend, I guess, Just okay, Bizarre cool. Adventure. Yeah. Uh, what have you been watching lately, Josh? Um, I've actually... I've actually watched quite a few films like um so you saw soul i think all, right i saw soul right um mm -hmm. it's it's magnificent i really liked it it mm. kind of it's really reminiscent to like you know inside out like it has that pixar vibe you know mm -hmm. um uh, it's not that yeah yeah uh, my friend uh, uh expected basically one of my friends is really hyped for it because in He's very into jazz, and he heard it. it's mm -hmm. about jazz, a jazz musician, and he expects mm -hmm. it to be basically like uh, Ratatouille, but for jazz musicians. Is that comment valid? Uh, before going, uh, before seeing the film, I thought um, so jazz would be much more prevalent, okay. but really, jazz could be substituted for. Um, so it's like any just passion. a backdrop, right? Okay. Because I'm going, I'm going to sound cheesy again. <laughs> Soul is really um, how do Hot I put soul. it? It's like um, it's like as as other Pixar films. It's it deals with a topic that it's uh, that is not necessarily um graspable. Mm -hmm. It's um, it feels more much more transcending, right? Like Soul is about finding your purpose in life somehow. Oh, but okay. At the same time, it's not really that. Right, it's more about appreciating life and the small things. Mm -hmm. And um, in the center of this film, you have this jazz mu music musician mm -hmm. that's not necessarily successful, mm -hmm. right? And um, as I said before, you could substitute jazz with any other passion. Okay. But um, jazz, I don't know why they chose jazz. Um, I mean, okay, everybody likes jazz. Um, well, that's music. Uh, Frankly, yeah. if you if you would choose like a genre which is most popular, you wouldn't pick jazz. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting that they did. Yeah, but um, like um, perhaps it's because like musicians mostly have um an unstable career mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. they're not necessarily financial um I guess yeah stable, mm -hmm. and um all of these art forms are um more of an of a creative endeavor mm -hmm. uh, instead of pragmatism and the movie deals also with creativity versus pragmatism mm. and it's it's quite interesting so would you rather settle on a like uh, on a job that you really don't feel like doing or that kind of um prohibits your creative freedom um you mm. can't really unfold yourself in your job or, or would you dare to um risk pursuing what you like to do in mm. this case playing jazz mm -hmm. um doing gigs but um every day is like a struggle um, a struggle right every day is unpredictable everything can happen basically mm -hmm. and yeah just so really sp spoke to me and i think soul really speaks to everyone <laughs> It feels kind of universal, like another... It, yeah, it's very ubiquitous and yeah. universal. Um, 
maybe I mean another universal message, but also Whiplash, where also I mean it's not Whiplash is also not necessarily much about jazz, but it's also yeah. just like the movie where it's a backdrop for basically a character that is very ambitious in something and wants to follow the stream and exactly. that to a like a um dangerous extent and i think with soil is with like a different message it's kind of similar with how just treated mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it's not that dramatic um as whiplash yeah, yeah i mean i'm just saying Obviously. they use they're both using just just as a backdrop yeah so it's like more um how do you say it um it encourages contemplation um introspection really mm. i mean the the title is soul and there is a soul world in the film like a um, literal or are you saying uh, talking about like the genre music genre soul i know the, the, the <laughs> film. i don't want to like give away too much okay but i think you can see it in the trailer so basically if i haven't you... seen everything anything about that movie except like okay. the cover uh, okay, you have to know, um, should I, like, kind of it's fine. describe, okay? It's fine. Okay, so, let me describe it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, um, the thing is, there's, there's this parallel world, right? Um, where, um, basically only souls exist. Okay. So yeah, that's that's like another concept that um your body and your soul are like separate things. Um your soul okay. is independent from your body. But like the memories and the accomplishment accomplishments in your life are like um bounded to that soul. They per pertain to that soul. Mm -hmm. And um in this soul world, uh, they are like mentors, right? They uh, educate young souls. Young souls are basically um, the souls that will eventually uh, inhabit um, like bodies on Earth. And those young souls have personalities, uh, distinct personalities, mm. uh, hobbies and stuff. And there's this one little soul that's called 22. That's really rebellious, and this soul doesn't want to um, kind of doesn't want to inhabit a body because it thinks that the world, so Earth, is a cruel place and stuff. Okay. And um, so because it doesn't really appreciate life on Earth, it lacks a spark. Uh, like they call it spark in this movie. It's like your last token that you have to gather to be able to be qualified to go on Earth, right? Okay. And this jazz musician finds himself in the soul world. Why? I'm not going to tell you. But yeah. he finds himself in the soul world, um, um, obligated to basically mentor this um, soul, this 22 soul. Mm -hmm. And um, what I find interesting is that both get transported on Earth, right? Yeah. And they um, basically do a body swap. So 22 um, somehow happens to find herself in the body of this jazz musician mm -hmm. called... Oh, uh, God. What's his name? Uh, fuck, man. Whatever. Oh, this, this can't be happening. Um, <laughs> this can't be happening, man. Joe. Right, Joe. Joe, Joe. And um, Joe finds himself in, um, in the body of a cat. Oh, and yeah, and that's so ingenious because 22 basically gets to experience the world in the body of Joe. Mm -hmm. And Joe in the, in the body of the cat kind of tries to control 22, basically tries to guide her through his life. That sounds like Ratatouille. Um, yeah, somehow. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> really, it's, it's really a mix between okay. Ratatouille and uh, Inside, Inside Out. Out. And um, Joe yeah. gets a new perspective on the world. Okay. through this uh journey and that's basically the premise um yeah okay it's it's really nice it's really mm. nice yeah the, th the thing with me in picture is kind of i know i will enjoy the movie but i don't think i will get a new experience with the movie necessarily yeah so you think yeah pixar yeah, movies it... are like recycled every time nowadays <laughs> maybe yeah mm -hmm. kind of in that direction i guess like the last great Pixar movie that I saw, or for me that mm -hmm. I saw, was Up. 
And that's been like <laughs> 12 years oh. now. Okay. I mean, I what? That's I, a this, long time. Yeah, I, I liked Inside Out, but yeah, I don't. It's not. It's not. Uh, it hasn't been a case anymore that I actively sought them out. Mm -hmm. But I will probably watch it still because, hey, why not? It's a Pixar movie. You know. Um, yeah. So we've talked about for an hour now. Should we like close the podcast? Well, I think it. <laughs> we should have done this before, but uh, what was your score on Alien? We haven't touched oh, on that. Oh, yeah, four. Four. Well, you gave it. Oh, okay. You were so negative. Yeah. I thought you gave it a three or something. Uh, I was inclined to give it a three. Mm. But, um, I mean, we've discussed the film a little bit about um, through, like, WhatsApp, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. I mean... <laughs> And now after the discussion, I feel way more certain that I did the like right decision, okay. giving it a four. Okay. Yeah, there's really much um, um, to love about the film, and like we both love science fiction films, so mm, we do. Yeah, maybe I was too critical. Maybe I just wasn't in the right mindset. Maybe I didn't pay enough attention to the subtleties. Yeah. I mean, it's. Um, if you, I mean, if you would have given it a three, it would also be fine. I was just, yeah. yeah there's as, not, there's no right opinion two. here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, ideally, there's no right opinion. <laughs> but uh, for um, the internet, there sometimes is. Uh, yeah. Also, maybe, do we, is any one of us, do we want to watch Alien 3? Because oh I don't, God. I don't That's necessarily true. want to. But I don't uh, know. I like, we both, we, like, it's the consensus that Alien and Aliens are, like, the two great ones, and then Alien 3 yeah. came. Wait, and... We could watch it um, okay. to basically, I guess, um, pay respect to David Fincher. Mm. It was his first film. Yeah. And perhaps we're interested um, in, I don't know, seeing what his first directional debut is. Mm. But on the other hand, maybe it's going to le um, leave a really bitter taste. Yeah, on like the f and yeah. I'm afraid. Yeah, and I think Ripley's arc is basically complete uh, with the two movies already. So I don't know what they're going to do with her. I, mm. I don't see them like going in a favorable direction. Probably mm. just they were just trying to milk the series and. Um, doing, I guess, um, it, uh, uh, inadvertently a uh, injustice to the character of Ripley. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't. <laughs> I was just asking because uh, maybe you. I mean, maybe you have already seen it, and I just didn't know or something. No, uh, I would have find it interesting because yeah, it's as yeah, you said, do David a... Fincher's first debut. Yeah. Yeah. We should do a um, watch together, really. Mm. It'll be fun. Yeah. Wait, can you use watch together for other things than YouTube? Could you use it for Netflix or something? Or I bet. Okay. I mean, I use Netflix Party with uh, TV. Yeah, we can use Netflix Party as well. Yeah. I mean... Um, All right. There's, by the way, an Alien 4. Did you know that? Uh, do you mean Alien Covenant? No, no, there's Wait. actually an Alien Force starring uh, Ripley. You mean coming out or legit, like, already no, made? It's like, oh my god. It's, yeah, it oh. already is there out there. It's called Alien Resurrection uh, 1997. Do I care? <laughs> do I care enough? I don't know. It has, yeah, no. Uh, who's the director, by the way? Uh, okay, no idea who that Jean is. Jean Pierre. Je okay, the producer was Joss Whedon. Oh, uh, Jean Pierre Jeuneau did uh, he, the. Uh, Emily. Yeah, he did Emily. Amelie, yeah. Uh, so he did some things. I, 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he redeemed himself. I suppose that's how you can say, yeah. Um, like David Fincher. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you make a masterpiece like Seven after completely demolishing a pretty good franchise? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as far as I know, the production was very rushed. Yeah, okay. yeah, and yeah, and um, David Fincher didn't have creative freedom. It's kind of restricted by the studio mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and did did Sigourney Weaver um, even want to um, shoot uh, a sequel? I have no idea. Aliens? Maybe it was a cash, and who knows? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. This was our episode on uh, House Moving Castle and yeah, Alien and, alien and, and Aliens. aliens. <laughs> well, I guess technically yeah. we could say House Moving Castle and Aliens because Alien is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's included in Aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but for the next episode, we could really talk about Alien uh, 3. Maybe, yeah. Provided we watch it. Yeah. And... Yeah. So, yeah, see you uh, in the next one. Yeah. 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 I hope you had fun. Bye. Yeah. And a good new year, too. Yeah, good new year. Mm. Happy new year. Happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, see you next time. See you next time.